Just before today's video starts, we have a quick message from my sponsor, Elgato. If you're a content creator looking to record your gameplay at the highest quality, then look no further. The HD60S is one of the best capture cards on the market right now. I'm using it in this video, and you can check out my link below for more details. So what's going on, everyone? My name is Mr. Dalek JD, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you your ultimate guide to Dead of the Night. This is going to be your one-stop hub for absolutely everything you need in order to have successful games and Easter egg attempts on Dead of the night. This is going to involve a full map walkthrough, how to efficiently open the map, how to craft the buildable shield of all locations, how to craft silver bullets of all locations, how to open Pack-a-Punch, how to get a free Alistair's Foley, how to upgrade that fully into the Annihilator, and to set yourself up for a high round run with the simplest and most easy to understand guide, then this is the video for you. In the comment section, I'll have timestamps which will separate all of the different parts of this guide, such as the different buildables and the strategy. You can choose what you want to watch but I highly recommend that you just watch this whole thing throughout as you're going to learn a lot of things that I'm sure you didn't know previously. So any feedbacks or thoughts on this video in the comments let me know if it helped or not would be amazing as it always makes my day. If you did enjoy this video, a like rating would be amazing. Only takes a second to do that, and it is so much quicker than the hours and hours it took to make this video. And I also have an entire Easter egg guide for Dead of the Night linked down below in this video's description or as an interactive card on your screen now. But anyway, let's jump into the game. So welcome, my friends, to my Dead of the Night Ultimate Guide. I'm so excited to jump into this. It's been a long time since I last recorded an Ultimate Guide for you all. And yeah, we're continuing the series on with Dead of the Night. We're going to be starting off with our Round 1 strategies so you guys can maximize your games every time you play and know some little hints, tips, and tricks here and there. So we're going to be starting by letting all of the zombies in. And of course, this is a, a thing you can do on co-op as well. But if you're playing on co-op, you're going to be separated. One player is going to be here and another player is going to be on the other side. But we're going to start this round by trying to get to the Sentinel Artifact as quickly as we can on round one. So we're going to go ahead and open this door, which is going to open the other side door as well. So if you're playing in co-op, watch out for that. And boom, on the east balcony, we have our first shield part there. Which, but we're going to be going through and picking them all up really consistently. So, of course, you can have all of that consistency there of watching all the stuff being picked up one at a time. So opening there, we have the Sentinel Artifact, which you want to pick up. And that's going to activate and open a few extra doors around the map that are going to be very helpful for us. So we're going to be going ahead and like collecting all the quest item parts one by one. So there are timestamps in the comment section to help you out. But we are going to be doing a little Easter egg that you can do straight off the bat, which will gain you an additional like bonus when it comes towards your game. So we have this staircase, uh, this bookshelf here, I should say. And uh, we have this sort of sickle looking icon, which we're going to activate. We're then going to be looking for another symbol, which is right here, which is not the right one in our game. So we're going to come over. And if you're confused at all by this, I do have a dedicated video, which I have linked down below in the description. As well as all my other videos I've uploaded about this map, just so you have a little bit more clarity. But if you're looking in these two bookshelves and you see that first symbol that I activated, go ahead and activate that. We're now looking for a sort of star which I believe is this one. Yep, so we're going to hold square on that. We're now looking for a U, which is that one. And then we're going to go and run back to the other bookshelf. And essentially, this is an Easter egg where we can open a secret room on round one and we could gain some additional points or maybe even a weapon as early on as this, which is, you know, pretty exciting stuff. So we're going to go ahead and activate this. And this should open... This revealing a secret room. And uh, yo, we've got a freaking weapon straight off the bat. I'm not going to lie to you. That is sweet. All right. Definitely a good, uh, a good little uh, result there. I've never actually had it drop uh, a weapon before. It's always just been like points. It's never been anything more. So that's exciting. I'm trying to find this last zombie. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and knife you. So. We're going to work on picking up all the shield parts in a moment. We're also going to be working on getting silver, which is going to be pretty exciting stuff. Lots of fetch quests going on, and we also will be showing you pretty much everything. We're going to be filling up the heads-up display, getting everything done as quickly as humanly possible. But we're going to need like a lot of areas open before we can start getting fetch quest items done, like um, the shield, as well as the silver. We're going to try and work on getting that as quick as possible. But you know what? 
getting that straight off the bat, I'm not going to lie, that is pretty sweet. So we're going to be working on getting Pack-A-Punch done very soon. I just need some extra points so I can open up the map. Is that double points? Oh, okay. Additional points, bonus points. I'll take that. Thank you very much. There's also some additional Easter eggs that open secret rooms, but they do take a little while and I don't really want to take too long. Doing stuff in this ultimate guide, I want to make it nice and sweet for you. So we've gone and done, done that. Okay, so I'm trying to think. What do we need to ha have open for? We need this open, and we also need this open. So 750, we can do that. And 750, we can do that. So we can instantly work on getting Pack-A-Punch, which is really, really sweet. So, where do we begin? Alright, we're going to work on Pack-A-Punch. So, if you guys know how to Pack-A-Punch, this is probably going to be a bit easy for you, but... I'm going to simplify it and make it simple for those that don't. So where we spawned originally, if we make our way down here into the bedroom hallway and the master bedroom, we have a set of three vases. We've got one there, got one there, and one there. Basically, one of these vases has a crystal hiding inside of it which was spawned here for us. It could also be there or there, so just melee all the vases just to make sure you know where the stones are. And in solo, we're gonna be collecting four zombie souls and then gazing into the stone. So let's just wait for the round to kick in and then we'll go collect our four zombie souls. So gazing in, we see a clock, which means we have to go to a grandfather clock round the map. So to me, that's looking like it could be this one. No, so basically looking for clocks that have the hands spinning like crazy. If they aren't spinning like crazy, then it's not the right clock. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and use this double point to my advantage. We can open this, which will lead us into the east hallway and then the dining hall, which it, the clock could be that one. Oh, it's not. Okay, so it's not that one. I'm going to be ahead and showing you guys a full map walkthrough as well. Don't you guys worry for those that are confused of the map layout. It's pretty easy once you memorize everything, but it's just... It's big, but there's lots of small areas that make up its size. So it was this clock. So as you see, the hand's going crazy. I'm going to set the clock. If we stand in here, we're going to have zombies coming towards us. Now, little birdie told me if you chuck a wraith fire inside of the clock, the wraith fire actually lasts for a very, very long time. I don't know how true that is. I just look like the flames. From the zombies are lasting for quite a while so essentially while we're in this we're going to be just standing still and we have zombies that have this sort of weird bluish teal flames on them and that's what we've got to have to do we're just going to wait a little bit each second that ticks down you see on the floor there once that disappears boom that challenge is done and we have a tuning fork which is our first one for pack a punch sweet so now I'm going to work on getting our second one, which is going to be the wine cellar. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And there is a mini Easter egg for another secret room, but we're not going to bother with that. We have one possible vase there. We have another vase there, which it is for our game here. So we're going to go ahead, start meleeing. All right, that's not going to help us out too much since my strife with this knife upgrade is already a one knife kill, but it'd be rude not to. Come on, Zambarinos. Let's grab them. One more. And we can gaze in. And we have a painting of a girl. Now, this painting can change. You might see possibly four different paintings in that one. So, if you need any help, I've got a separate guide on it with all locations. But this one, I believe, is going to be right near the master bedroom. I'm pretty confident this painting is by the master bedroom. And as you can see, it does match up with what we looked at. So, we're going to reveal... And boom. I didn't know she's had a noose tied to her. That's crazy. But we have to escort this ghost lady. Until she eventually takes us to the uh, somewhere where we can get our second tuning fork. So go ahead and go down here. She's on the stage now, rocking out. We're going to be like, come on, lady. And I think she's going to take us to the mausoleum. That's where it looks like. So this is the opposite side of the map to the dining hall, the west hallway which leads into the library. And this is also our third sort of vase area that we're going to be activating for Pack-A-Punch. So I'm going to go ahead and open this door, which will lead us out into the cemetery. Slowly does it. Slowly does it. I was going to be checking around the map for fire trap locations as well. We're going to go ahead and open that. And we can begin the final stages. 
We should be able to get a pack a punch on this round, all being well and good, because the final pack a punch locate uh, challenge shouldn't be anything that will involve us going to a different round. I'm just gonna take out some of these, and there we go. Ghost Lady goes into the grave and reveals a tuning fork, which is sweet. So we're gonna go ahead and activate our third and final one. So if you follow me around here, this, like I said, most of the map is pretty darn narrow. So definitely just be careful because zombies can group up. There's not a lot of area to move around, so be very careful. So we have one vase location, which is here. Obviously, it's not in that one, so we're going to continue on. Along the staircase, we have a second vase location, which it is there for us, which is nice. And then there's a third one just right there. There's also a free wonder weapon on the wall, which we're going to be getting in a few moments. We're going to be working on getting that quest. All right, and one more should do the trick. So now we can gaze into the stone. What are we seeing? We are seeing Ra, the perk Ra. So the perks do move around the map, but this one should be either outside here in the cemetery, mausoleum, mausoleum, and I keep getting ripped to shreds for how to pronounce it, or it's going to be in the greenhouse um, greenhouse area, which is on the opposite side of the map. So if it is raw, our screen should go silver. It's not. That's going to be a different one. That's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and run over to the greenhouse. So if we make our way down here, run along through here, and then go to the opposite door, which we opened earlier. Go right through here, and then there's a door which leads us outside. Boom. And then the perk is going to be down there. Just for the ease of time, I'm going to pop an extra credit. It's because I can't quite afford the door. Just, you know, basically saving, saving time here. And yeah, as we enter, boom, our vision goes all sort of grey and uh, just very dull coloured. And uh, we now should have vampires spawning in. Oh, hello. So yeah, they they spawn in uh they spawn in and around this area, so just be just be careful. We're not gonna grab that nuke because we don't want to end the round. And we do have a few zombos that were at the end of the round also coming in to join us. Come on, zombies. But after this, we'll be able to open pack a punch, which will enable us to do a lot of things, which is gonna be very exciting. We're I mean, basically doing a lot within this this one round. There we go, and there's our tuning fork. Boom, baby. Simple as that. So we're going to go ahead, pick up the tuning fork, and we now can get access to Pack-A-Punch straight off the bat, which is pretty cool. We got that really, really quick. But just before we do that, we're going to go and get ourselves silver bullets because we're going to need it. So silver bullets are going to be looking for a gobbler. And wow, how ironic. We just find it there lying on the table. But if it's not there, you will find the gobbler on this table there. And if your goblet was not in either of those two locations, then you're going to find it in the opposite hallway, and it's going to be lying right there. So that's pretty exciting. We're now going to look for the candle. So the candle can either be down here by the mozu, which it is, funnily enough. Bam! That's very quick and easy. Nice. If it's not there, then make your way up these grand stairs here into the uh, entrance hall, where you'll find it right there. And if it's not in either of those two spots, apologies for my voice there, you will find it there on the floor. And then finally, we're going to be looking for the silver plate, which is going to be in the wine cellar. So if we make our way down here, we've already opened up the wine cellar. There's three spots for this one as well. So we have one spot on the wall there, which it is. It can also be on the table right there. And if it's not, it will be right there. I'm going to take up this zombie because it's annoying me a little bit. But with all the silver parts, you go up to this buildable bench and you can melt the silver. So we're going to go melt silver. We grab the part right there. But now we're going to need to pick up three different um, sort of chemical powders. So we're going to start off with uh, charcoal. So the spawns for charcoal can be in this fireplace right there. If it's not there, then that's fine. We're going to keep on moving. Keep on moving, moving. It's important you get silver bullets as early as possible. And the secret rooms Easter eggs can also give you silver bullets, so that's pretty exciting. You also have a spawn for charcoal there, but it's not there in any of those, so it's going to be in the billiards room, and oh gosh. Once you do that, we are going to start getting vampires on the map as well. They do make your screen red, like as if you have been red screened, but 
it's fine. They just do 50, uh, 50 damage to you, just like they would any normal zombie. So, making our way in the billiards room. That fireplace right there. Boom. There is our charcoal right there. We're now going to go ahead and grab the... Um, uh, sulfur, which is going to be in the greenhouse laboratory, so make our way through east hallway into the dining hall, and then we're going to be looking in this massive building here, which is going to be very important. I'm sure you all know this, but a lot of the Wonder Weapon building takes place within here, and then it's going to be on this table right there. If it's not, it could be on the opposite table, which it is. And if it's not there, then it's going to be in this back table right here. So now what we need to do is grab ourselves some poo, which is going to be in the mausoleum. So we're going to make our way back over to there. And I mean, it seems like this is quite confusing, but we have timestamped everything in the comment section. So just keep skipping along. But I don't advise you do that. Just keep watching through because you're going to be learning some surprises here and there. Because that's what we do here on the channel. This is what the ultimate guides are. So along, we're going to go in the opposite hallway, back out into the cemetery. I'm going to be looking for our lovely poo. And this will allow us to craft silver bullets. Now, with the secret rooms easter egg like I just did, you could possibly not get a weapon out of it, but possibly get silver bullets as well. So you could negate all of this, but it's very unlikely you'll get the silver bullets. So I'm just FYIing here. So the, the locations for the dung is going to be behind this tree right there. And since it's not there, we're going to continue on looking. Get out my way, zombies. We could have the poo lying right there, which it is. Bat guano is what it's called, or it could be right there. So now we have our three silver pieces, which have been melted into silver, and we have the three chemical compounds. We can now go ahead and melt these into silver bullets. And then we can go to Pack-A-Punch, but I advise we get silver bullets for a particular reason. So we're going to go ahead and craft our silver bullets, hopefully not get hit by any zombies in the process. And there we go, weapons loaded with silver bullets. And you can see on the bottom right, above my ammo, it shows I my weapon has silver bullets. And also it replenishes all your ammo on your gun, so that's pretty exciting. So come through here, the main hall to the north atrium. We open this, we have a perk machine which can spawn there. If not, it can spawn underground in the wine cellar. And then if we use our tuning forks on here, boom shakalaka, we have the door open. Which will lead us into the forest. Straight for Pack-A-Punch. But we do have an unwanted guest, which is a werewolf. I'm going to throw down my ray fire there. Oh. But yeah, we want to be killing this werewolf with silver bullets because it is going to drop something very, very nice and easy for us. Okay. Yo, chill. Now, the werewolf is an absolute bullet sponge. I'm forewarning you guys now. Even with a weapon like this, it's not great. I'm just making sure that I don't go down here because this is a very, very narrow area. If the werewolf hits you like that, he can take almost 100 health from you. So just be very, very careful of that. But we have the Pack-A-Punch machine down here. And there we go. Killing him with silver bullets dropped werewolf chaos material. We're going to need that for later. But there's the Pack-A-Punch machine in all its glory. And in order to get the second part here, we're going to be getting the shield built. So here's the part where we're going to be building the shield. So if you follow me, we're going to start working on getting the shield parts very quick and easy. So we're going to be working on the shield part with the smiley face. And as we saw right at the start of our game, we can find it right there on the east balcony. So we'll pick that up. If it's not there, then we'll just follow ourselves around here. And we will be able to find it on the grand staircase right by this pillar there and if it's not waiting for you there then it's last and final spot is going to be on the opposite balcony just resting right there pretty sweet we're now going to go for another part which is going to be the shield window so the shield window is going to be in the library section which you follow through here and this is very simple it's a massive massive window it can spawn on this sofa here it can spawn on that table there but any keen-eyed viewers watching this video already probably have spotted that the shield part is actually right here. So pick that up. That's our second part. Oh boy. Woo! Lots of zombies around. And our third part is going to be in the dining hall area and the west hallway. So running through here, we're going to be checking our first spot straight away. Which it can be on this chair. And look, 
There it is. Not if it's possible. not there, then check on this little bench there. And if it's not there, then it can be waiting for you by that balcony. But now we've got all the shield parts. We're going to go ahead and build this. You can only build it in one location on this map. And the buildable bench is going to be uh, just before the billiards room. So in the smoking room. So follow me right in here. I'm going to craft the ballistic shield. And boom. We got it already. Sweet as. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go in the library and we're going to melee a particular bookshelf which is going to give us a part for the wonder weapon. So if we melee this shelf right here with our shield out, it's going to open, revealing a nice little part. So now we need to actually go and get Alice the secret weapon, which is the weapon on the wall right here. And this is a simple four digit code and these symbols are all hidden around the map in certain areas it's pretty simple so we're going to be starting off with the blue symbol as we're right near it and this can be in the mausoleum area and i'm actually going to write these down live as we're playing just because it actually makes my life a lot easier and this will probably be easy for you guys as well to note down but there's four spots that these symbols can spawn in each area so be sure to check all of them the cemetery there could be one on there it's not there there can also be one up there, which it is, and for me, it's blue A, so I'm going to write that down. A third spot for it can be just below this lion statue right there, and if it's not in either of those three, then your spot is going to be in this gravestone section, going to be on that gravestone there. We're now going to be working on getting our next symbol, so let's go. This is going to be for the green symbols, which are going to be around the greenhouse area. So if you just follow me, we're going to be checking behind this fence as it could be a spot there. If it's not, don't worry about it. We're going to continue on. Run down here past this mystery box location. And in this gazebo, you might spot a symbol there. It's not there, so it's fine. You may have caught it earlier on in the video. And it's behind this fence for us, which is a green X. So I'm going to write that down. Or oh, its fourth spot can be right there. Pretty sweet. We're now going to work on getting the yellow symbol. And the yellow symbol was found outside here before the forest. So if you come out, take a left or a right even. And there could be a spot there. If it's not there, then come check behind this fence. And there could be one there. If it's not, then check behind this fence. And it is there for us. So that is yellow X. I'm going to go ahead and type that up. And a fourth location can be up there for our fourth spot. And the last but not least is going to be the red symbol. So we're going to be looking around for that cheeky red symbol. It can be on this wall here, which it is, which is very lucky for us. So I'm going to write that down. A second spot for it can be in the master bedroom, which is going to be on this wall right here. A third spot can be down in the dining room. So I'm just going to go and buy that debris anyway. And it can be on the wall there. And fourth, last but by no means least, the last location for this red symbol can be in the wine cellar, which is going to be, if we can run down there, in this zombie window barricade, and it's going to be on this barrel, to be precise. So now we've got all our symbols, we're going to go ahead and input this to get the gun off the wall. We had a blue A, so I'm going to hold my interaction button to rotate the lock. I'm just going to get rid of these zombies, these are going to be very annoying. Our next one was a green X. Yo, Zombs, do you want to chill? Next was a green X. I'm going to rotate the lock till we find that. Yellow was also X. And then our red was the sort of L looking one. So once we have all that, we hold a look up here to enter the code. The cog should spin and boom, it opens. And we can take Alistair's Folly, which is really cool. So with the two parts we got earlier from the werewolf and getting the part from behind the library, we can already work on upgrading this thing to the Chaos Theory, which is pretty crazy, right? Like, we're already working on getting the Chaos Theory. So, Alice's Folly as a normal wonder weapon is pretty good. It's essentially a, 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 a pistol version of the ray gun. I'm trying to find oh, some zombies so we can kill them. I'm sure you guys already know about this. This gun is pretty cool. And of course, on a, as low round as round six, this thing is going to be amazing. But we want to go one better, don't we? We want to upgrade it to the Chaos Theory, which we can do right away. So all we need to do is with one of the parts we got from the Werewolf, we simply go up here. We hold our Interact to create Prima Materia. We're just going to place uh, the Werewolf part that we picked up into this machine. We're going to have to wait about 
maybe 10 to 15 seconds for this machine to do its thing. It's just mashing up that werewolf chaos material, turning it into prima materia, which is what the buildable bench is going to be using for us here. So boom, we've got the part. And then all we do is then craft the Chaos Fury. I just don't want to go down here. I'm going to craft the Chaos Fury. And just like that, boom. Chaos Fury. So if you charge this weapon up, it shoots a whirlwind like that. It's freaking amazing. Like, don't get it twisted. This is what one of the best uh, wonder weapons ever. Almost better than the... Well, I guess it's personal preference if you prefer this one or the full upgrade, but we're going to work on the full upgrade, which is really, really cool. But just before that, we're going to be working on a side Easter egg to get a new wonder weapon, which is the crossbow, which is going to be very, very good against vampires. So for us to do that, we're going to need to melee six candles around the map. So we're going to go ahead and start working on doing that. So in the timestamp, you're probably here. We're going to be doing the candles. So... We're going to be meleeing six candles, which if melee correctly, they go out and they make that noise. Oh, what drop are we getting? I mean, I'll take that. Bonus points. So these are in no particular order. And if you want a more detailed guide on how to do this, I do have a link for it down below. Okay, so that's our second one done. I'm trying to remember these all from memory here. Because I know most of them. I'm just uh, trying to do them. So if we open this room, this takes us into the library where we have a third one. Nice and simple. And then in the opposite hallway, we're going to have another candle that we can melee. There's also one in the wine cellar. And then I think there's one more somewhere. So if we go ahead and melee this one. Oh yeah, there's one in the master bedroom as well. So we run right up here. It's one in the master bedroom, just beside it. So we're going to go ahead and melee that one. And finally, the wine cellar. Now, we might not be able to do this on this round, just because luck be a lady. We're going to be looking for a ghost around the map. And hopefully, this ghost will be here for us straight away. So I'm going to go ahead and knife that. So now that we've knived all six... You make your way down to the forest and there's going to be a gravestone that we can interact with which makes our vision sort of zombie blood-esque and we're going to have to find a ghost somewhere around the map and escort her to the mausoleum. And you don't get a lot of time so I'm definitely going to buy the fast travel just to speed things up. But right here is the tombstone so if you activate it, if you've done it properly, see your vision goes red. That just... She's like, whoa! That weren't just me, was it? Sure what just happened. So we're going to be looking for this lady. Now, she can be in the dining hall, and I hope she is, because if not, this is going to be pretty embarrassing. Is she there? No, she's not. Okay. I have a certain amount of time to go find her, and I have a dedicated video showing this Easter egg off with all locations of her down below. Sometimes I've had a spawn in here, through literally just me running around and then she just appeared. She can be chilling at the back apparently in here, so let's hope she is. Um, this is probably going to run out sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think it, this is an L. We've not found her this round. This is part of why we show you this. Because this is, this is like, you know, we're not showing you this in mutations or anything like that. We're showing you this in a, like, live game so you know exactly what we're doing. In order to go ahead and grab all this stuff. So, we didn't find her in this game, in this round, which is absolutely fine. Because so what we're going to do now is we're going to be working on getting the Alistair's Annihilator, which will involve us going to the next round. But we're going to start off with the first quest. So, I guess the timestamp for uh, the crossbow weapon will be sort of in two parts, I guess. That was part one. And we'll go back when we can actually uh, find her. Once we've activated the gravestone. Yeah, we're going to start off with part one of the Annihilator. Which is by shooting a uh, orange lamp on this particular set of stairs. So this is the orange lamp. So you shoot it with a Chaos Fury. And it's going to go out and it's going to light another lamp. Slightly orange. So it's going to be that one. Then it's going to go ahead and light another one. Which I'm pretty confident is that one. And then the last and final one is... It's not that one. Oh, it just went out. Damn, we were just a little bit too slow. 
If you're a little bit slow on it, then you've got to wait about 90 seconds or so for it to uh, come back. So we can go ahead and do that. And also, I'm pretty sure we just saw a prompt for Firegate Core lying on the ground yet. So we're going to go ahead and pick that up. Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and go to the next round. So we can start working on getting these upgrade parts. Because you can get these very quick and easy. I was just going to wait for the orange lan lantern to come back on. But yeah, it is time-based, just to confirm it. And you can only use your Chaos Theory for this step. No one else, if you're playing a co-op game, no one else can be shooting these lanterns as well. It needs to just be one sole player. But we're going to start off by killing vampires with our Chaos Theory of the Charge Shot. As it's going to... Uh, basically give us Vampire Bile. I might actually want to stay away from the lanterns just for a moment. Come on, vampires. Where are you? Okay, that's not the effect we want. We want that later. Okay, so there we go. We have a vampire in there. If we kill him, it drops some bile. And if you press our back button, you can see we have a jar now. The jar is going to be the bile, and we need to fill it up. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's fully filled up with bile. Didn't have any vampires there, so I'm gonna go ahead, end the round. I'm gonna go ahead and do this lantern Easter egg again. So I'm gonna reload my weapon so we have enough shots in it, but here we go, we've got another red lantern. So we shoot that. We now look for the next red lantern, which is that one. We've also got that one. And then finally, we have this one. And when done correctly, it's gonna shoot a bat out, but we wanna shoot that bat as soon as possible. So we can get this part because you do not want to be just looking up in the air trying to shoot this thing for five minutes because man it is so hard to hit this thing when it's flying around quick like, it doesn't sound like it'll be difficult but trust me it is okay and we still have the uh still have the zombie so since we failed to find the ghost lady when we first activated that gravestone i'm gonna go ahead and activate it again and see if i can find her so i'm gonna go to the forest i'm gonna activate the gravestone and if i find her then you'll know otherwise it's gonna be another l so catch you in a second oh found her she's chilling in the bedroom hallway what the heck where did she go oh there she is Okay, she's a little bit creepy. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, if you're doing this on solo, we need to get her over to the mausoleum and the zombie blood could run out. So what happens if it runs out is you can just activate zombie blood in the next round and go exactly where she last was. And then you can just continue on this journey. So this is, I'm pretty confident this is going to fail. Well, not fail, but we're gonna run out of time with her. In the zombie blood state to get her all the way to the graveyard. She's going in a really weird spot. Like, she's floating in all sorts. Okay, where, have you, where did you go? Where you at? Oh, there she is. I'm such an idiot. She was in that door... She's through that zombie barrow. There you go. This goes to show you how finicky this can be. That's how, like, you just got to be so on it. So we're going to keep these zombies because we should be able to get all of the parts from her really, really soon. But she does kill zombies, too. Yeah, she kills zombies, too. She's mad. Literally, she's crazy. All right, and then she'll go up there. And then from here... She's going to go ahead and possess zombies. I'm going to be killing the zombies in a particular order. I'm going to be starting. So as soon as we see her move into an actual zombie. So she's about to possess some. She's either possessing or killing. Okay, so we need to kill this one with just a regular gun. And that's going to drop a jewelry piece. And she's going to possess another zombie. As you can see. And we need to kill with equipment. So boom. And once the ray fire disappears, basically above where she was standing, we should see a part. There we go. Second part there. The third part is going to be a special kill. So we're going to look for the zombie she's possessed, which is right there. And that should have done it. Yep. So we pick that piece up there. And then the last kill we're going to need, to if she's possessed, is a shield bash kill. So that zombie right there. So... Boom. She reappears. 
and the part is there. Sweet. So with all four parts, we're going to make our way into here. Oh, really? A werewolf? So you place down the four objects that we just picked up from the ghost lady. And we now need to kill vampires in there. Oh man, I'm a little nervous for what comes after this bit. Because it's honestly a little bit tricky. I'm not going to lie to you. We collect all the four pieces of jewellery. We're now just going to chill in here like villains. And uh, hope for the best. Come on. So when we kill vampires in here, you're going to basically hear the ghost lady start shrieking. Like screaming. We've really not had that many this game. There we go, vampire. So you hear her screaming. Out of nowhere, we're suddenly getting tons of vampires. Finally. And there we go. You notice that the, the ground's all blue. That means we're done, but we have 60 seconds to run down these stairs and activate this bunker before it's disabled. But there we go. We held our interact button. And boom. Right down in here, we have the crypt. And we have the brand new Savage Impaler. As soon as we go in here, we have a lockdown. So this thing is insane. It can kill vampires, it kills zombies. It kills vampires really, really, really quickly. And werewolves, it can kill them in like four shots, I'm pretty sure, maybe. Uh-oh. Shield breaking is not good. This is quite a tight room, so I do advise you just be very careful. Very, very, very careful in here. But after we've killed all the vampires and a werewolf, which should spawn at some point, we should be able to get let out of here. There we go. We are let out, boys. And then we have the Savage Impaler, which is an amazing weapon. Amazing, amazing, amazing weapon. So like I showed you, we've already gotten one part for the... Um, we got one part from killing the Nosferatu bat that flew up from the lanterns we now also have the vampire bile that we need to collect we're also going to go ahead and try and get the third part from the forest so we've not filled up the bile completely we're nearly there but we can get another part for the annihilator upgrade down in the forest we're going to need to use the wonder weapon on zombies over these weird little mushroom dig things so we're looking for these i doubt we'll get it straight away and I don't know if this is going to... Okay. I need the yellow elemental. So there we go. And the zombie's going to dig. But did he find the part? Unfortunately, he didn't. Can we get some Fs in the comment section, please? Hopefully that zombie doesn't die. But normally this effect... Yeah, it does eventually kill them. No! I was like, the effect lasts for quite a while, actually. But we've got the Savage Impaler, we've got the Chaos Fear, which is soon going to be uh, Alice's Annihilator. That's pretty much the setup you want. And if you're playing in, in co-op and someone's got on this, because only one person can get it from that secret room, once they've got it, anyone can get it out the mystery box. So all players can get it in-game, which is pretty high. I'm going to go ahead and shoot that. So our next is the uh, yellow elemental, because that's what we want. Yeah, boom, you shoot it on the zombie, they're going to dig. And I don't think it found it. Nope, didn't find it, so... I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to go for our third. I think we've got vampires spawning in now as well, which is a little scary. Yep. Oof. Oofed. 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 Okay, that did not go down well. I'm going to have to go ahead. I need my specialist. That's. I don't have a shield, and I need my specialist. Okay, I'm just waiting for a zombie to come. Oh, we've got some bile from killing the vampires. That's good. Oh. Got some more bile. So that's what our filled up bile is going to look like completely. I'm just going to run away because I don't want the zombies to die. Because we need one to dig up this part. And this is just not doing it. Okay, last zombie. Please give us the luck we need to get us this annihilator part. I believe in you, Madame Zombie. He's going to dig. And she found it. Let's go, boys. So now we've got the last part for Alice's pistol. We've got... We got this part that they just dug up. We got the part from the bat and we've got the bile. So before we can fully finish this, we need to go back to the cemetery and we're going to activate a coffin which is going to give us a red Nosferatu. Now I must warn, 
This is going to spawn a red vampire zombie, which is pretty darn powerful. And from this point onwards, once you spawn this zombie out of the coffin, your vampires are going to always be red vampires, which suck your blood and have this really annoying animation where they leap on you like denizens from Black Ops 2. Yo, go away. No one wants you here. This coffin, as you can see, it's steaming red, overflowing with evil. You hold square to summon, and then boom, you're going to have a big evil zombie waiting for you. I, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to risk anything. There we go. I think it's spawned in. Here it is. He looks completely ready. And killing him drops the last part. So I'm just going to clean up here. Get out of my face, zombies and vampires, mainly. Where were you when I needed you? We're going to go and pick this up. I'm... Yeah, <laughs> I was not making my way out of that. My first down. Dying Wish, I love you. But with all three parts now, we're going to go and make our way to the chaos. Uh, going to put this stuff in the, the greenhouse laboratory. So, join me there. So, just to show how good this is on werewolves. Very good. Very good against werewolves and vampires. This gun is mad. Making our way in here. We're going to put in not one, but two pieces of Prima Materia. So we're going to create Prima Materia. Then I have to wait 15 seconds. I'm going to pick it up on the side. Go away, zombies. We should take about 15 seconds. So we'll meet you in a second. And boom, there's one of our Prima Materia. And this is going to be our second. So there we go. Both parts. And then if we go over to this craftable table... We can now craft Alistair's Annihilator. So now we have the two best weapons in the game right here, right now at our disposal to go to high rounds, to do Easter eggs, all that great stuff. Basically the perfect setup for your high round run, which is sweet. I'm just going to go ahead and finish it up by showing you all the perk locations because, you know, that is probably going to help. And I definitely need some perks because, look, I've got none. I don't even have Dying Wish anymore. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a charge shot down here. But we have Danu. Danu's always in here. And what's great about this weapon is it's... Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Wow. Okay, I already lost Danu. That was incredible. That's really how you show off the perks, ladies and gentlemen. This map, yeah, they can really catch you off guard. My charge shot should have got them all. So we're now going to go ahead and use... Actually, we're not going to use the fast travel. Ooh. Okay, we're going to grab our ballistic shield again. Pick up Danu. So this has four different elemental shots. we got our favourite, the whirlwind one, which is a classic. I mean, it's a hot classic. Why wouldn't you? If we come down here, the wine cellar can have a perk. Which, it isn't there right now, but there can be one right there. And instead... Oh, there's the Red Nosferatu. Oh my god. I might show you the animation. Just just to show you what it looks like, what you're dealing with. When a, a, a vampire gets you. Because it brings you down to like 50 health. It's honestly frightening. We have another perk location out here. This is Zeus. And that can swap. Look, that's the one. I don't know if he wants to grab us today. I don't really want him to. We'll go ahead and show you another charge shot. This one literally disintegrates zombies. It's amazing. I love it. I love it so much. Still hear him. Look, is he going to do it? No, he's not going to do it. Thank God. I don't want him to. If you run up into the cemetery, we also have another perk location, which is going to be Odin, which we showed you earlier. That, for me, has secret sauce, so we're going to go and grab that. Lovely, tasty drink right there. And now, lastly, but no least, least is Ra, which we showed you earlier, which was where our challenge was, which was the greenhouse lab. And there is Ra. So that's concluding our ultimate guide to Dead of the Night. There are, of course, a few other tiny little Easter eggs that I've not mentioned in this video, but, uh, I mean, they're, they're so, like, tiny that I don't think they really would be important for someone that's trying to learn the map and just wants to know the bare basics. There is also some like other secret um, stuff around the map. Like I'm pretty sure if you mail it, is it mailing the safe? Is it shooting that? You can get this to appear. There's just a lot of other secrets around the map, which we don't necessarily need to go into. But it's just, you know, it's just good to know. 
So if you want to learn any more tips about Dead of the Night, then I have a playlist link down below in the description where I have guides for like all of what I showed you in this video, but in a lot more detail. We also have a full Easter egg guide, which you can check out on the channel. And we'll be covering and doing more videos like this for all the other Black Ops 4 Zombies maps. I've already got one of these for Blood of the Dead and Classified. So if you've not seen that, please go ahead and check them out if you need any additional help. But if you found this video useful, a like rating would be very much appreciated. Feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. And I'll catch you for another video very, very soon. Bye.